In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to introduce you to a titling tool that you have if you own PowerDirector Ultimate or PowerDirector 365. It's called Titler Pro. Unfortunately, it comes with no documentation, it's somewhat dated, and it has a few quirks. But despite these drawbacks, there are many great tools it adds to your titling capabilities inside of PowerDirector. We'd like to show you a few short examples in this clip of the kinds of things it can add to your titling, and then we'll get back to our introduction of Titler Pro. To use Titler Pro inside of PowerDirector, all you need to do is click on the T on the left side or press the F7 key to get into your title room. What I prefer doing is getting into my subcategory. That's simply the new blue one. Normally it will be the last one in the list. And take Titler Pro and drag it to any video track like you would any other title. And so there I have my Titler Pro. Right now, my default length is 5 seconds. I'm going to click on the clock above the timelines. I'm going to change that to 15, and I'll show you why in a moment. Now we're going to go into Tyler Pro. To launch the program, you simply double-click on the title that says Tyler Pro in the timeline, and it will launch the Tyler Pro editing window. When we're in the editing window, we see some things we expect. We have a timeline for each title. Now inside Tyler Pro, the titles are called paragraphs. You also have a screen preview, and you have some play controls on the timelines, and then you have some common controls on the top about your particular title. You can change the font family by clicking on the down arrow, and that will take all the fonts you have loaded in your copy of Microsoft Windows and modify the title accordingly. You can change the font size from the drop-down or you can actually type in the number. It doesn't have to be exactly one of these numbers. You can do bold, italic, or underline and you can align it left, center, right, or left and right. You also can control the kerning and the horizontal spacing by using these tools up here. You notice the title begins centered. Now you have an option of three different kinds of backgrounds. One drawback is you cannot see the background of your PowerDirector project. You will only see a background that is gray, or if you click on View, you can turn it to black or white. Those are your options. But you do not see the background. You have to go back and forth between Titler Pro and PowerDirector to perfectly position the title in front of whatever is on the background in your copy of PowerDirector. But it's really not that too difficult once you get used to it. I'm going to take this title and I'm going to drag it down to the lower section of the screen. To add another title, I simply click on Add Paragraph. It will give me another one. You notice it comes in centered. I'll put it up here and I could do that as many times as I want. I also have a button that says Add Shape. Now if I have a title highlighted, it will look blue. If I click Add Shape with a title highlighted, I can choose an ellipse or rectangle, it will add it in place of or in addition to my title. I don't want that. I'll use Control Z to get out of that. If none of them are selected and I do Add Shape, then I can add a shape as it were a different title. You notice again the default is in the center of the screen and I can take it and move it. I can change the look and feel of it. I have a whole bunch of other controls I can use over here. We won't get into those. But part of the question I would have is what's the stacking order? Right, in, right now it begins by putting everything on the top. What does that mean? Well, let me find out. I'm going to click on my enter text here and with that highlighted, I'll do control A to make sure I have it all selected. I'm going to click on the style button for my text. I'll change the color of this simply to a blue. And now I'm going to take my shape and let's see what happens when we move the shape. Well the shape now is in front of it. So I've discovered that the higher 
an element is in the stacking order of my timelines, it will override what's below. To adjust this, I simply drag and drop it down. And now it says shape. And now shape is behind. So the other two layers are in front of the shape, which is now the bottom layer. But it's an easy way to put a shape behind text. And then we have to simply modify the size of the shape and the position of the shape. We can do things like that. Unfortunately, you cannot rename the shape. It will always be called shape. You can rename the text. So if I have entered text, I, click, I right click and do edit text. And then I can change what it says. Let's say uh, this is a sample and I've modified the text. And you notice in the timeline, it also reflects that change. So this is a simple way of doing something like that. So I can right click on any text and choose edit text. And then if I want to make this smaller so it fits inside, I can just change the font size from up here. So that's an example. There are other things that we can do I won't get into. The other thing I want you to notice is there's two other quirks to the program. You notice that the, the timelines are all eight seconds long. That's the default in Tyler Pro. Yet, I made my title using Tyler Pro in PowerDirector 15 seconds long. You have to manually adjust the one to fit the other. Otherwise, what will happen is when I finish with this editing, I will get back into PowerDirector and the title will disappear after eight seconds because it's only eight seconds long, even though the shell it's inside in PowerDirector is 15 seconds long. To align the two, I need to go to the upper right corner and there I have my eight seconds. I have to highlight the characters and change it to 15. And now you notice my ruler is wider here. It's 15 seconds long. I can simply take one or all of my titles and expand them to match the length of this entire title. And again, you can start and end segments here by clicking on either end and I can have them begin or end any time I want. I can actually keyframe these if I so choose to do that too. So we can do edit, we can copy, paste, or delete these particular elements. So that is something you need to remember, otherwise it's going to drive you crazy. Let's see, I don't have any of them. Now that's 15 seconds long. You also have the option of using all these controls on titles. We won't get into that in this particular tutorial. And then you have a timeline indicator here. And wherever you have this click, that is what you will see. You notice when I'm all the way to the, to the left, I do not see the shape because it only starts here. So the time indicator is important. You want to see what's happening in that moment in time in your title. Another thing you might want to notice is normally when you're done, you want to click on File Save. If I do that, I'll show you what happens. It takes me to my file system and wants to save this as an independent title. I normally don't do that. I'll close that screen. If I click on the X, it will automatically close the program and then it will exit me back to PowerDirector. So that's the normal way I end my editing session. It will save my changes inside of PowerDirector, not as an independent title. So that's what I often use. But let me show you something else. If I want to see PowerDirector, I can minimize my screen. But notice what happens. I'm in PowerDirector and I'm clicking on icons. I'm trying to find a menu and nothing works. Power Director looks like it's broken. This is another thing to be aware of. It's not broken. I can only run one program or the other at the same time. If I go down into my taskbar and hover over the Power Director icon, I will see that I have my Power Director program and my new Blue Tidler Pro program. In order to edit back in Power Director, I have to get I have to click on the Tidler Pro and then I have to click on the X in the upper right corner. That will close my editing session so that I can get back to and edit in PowerDirector and have everything functional. So that's the tricky way in which you have to move back and forth between the programs. But it does give you a lot of interesting and new capabilities when it comes to editing titles 
inside of PowerDirector. Other tutorials will begin to unpack all of the controls that we didn't have time to look at in this overview.